Tonight, we are following the sad story that you can't stop talking about. Artwork for Emily Rose Nevarez. Filling the front lobby of Eastwood Middle School tonight, students using roses to create an image of life in honor of one cut short. And parents sharing with us how their kids are coping with this tragedy. Steve saying, I explained to her there will be lots of judgments and rumors of why, but it might be an answer we will never know. Also, the clock is ticking. Will El Paso firefighters accept the latest deal offered by the city, or will you have to decide the pay they get and what they have to pay for? Now, this is all part of ABC 7's Your Voice, Your Vote coverage. Election Day is right around the corner. Plus, we're always listening here at ABC 7. A viewer in Tornillo sharing video of another nasty water problem. And we made the calls and found out what you need to hear. Remember this picture we showed you last week? It was posted on Instagram, and now it's behind a major lawsuit between the state trooper you see here and the state. It has people talking, Nicole. We may be under clear skies now, but I'm tracking changes to your forecast. Rain will return to the forecast. Details in Storm Track weather. It's all next on ABC 7 at 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Hello, everybody. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW, the only newscast in the Borderland. Nicole, with the social media buzz, I'm Bob Harp. And I'm Nicole Gomez. Tracking what you're saying, I'm tracking clear skies, but the rain will return. Have the details and weather. Hey, the weather was nice today, right? <laughs> Yes, we'll get to that in just a little bit. A little hot outside. All right, topping our news, though, tonight, folks. Uh, Facebook is uh, blowing up with your reaction over our top story. And Emily's family is now calling on social media to help them out. We'll tell you how you can help Emily Novatis' family pay for her funeral services coming up. So grab your cell phone or tablets, and we'll tell you how to connect. Social media, though, is where you're reacting to this tragedy. Leslie saying, so sad. Cannot comprehend why he would do this. Well, just 14 years old, El Paso police say Emily was shot by her own father, Raymond Novatis, who turned him the gun on himself, and he was found dead early yesterday morning in the family's home, pretty close to Pebble Hills and Saul Kleinfeld. Emily died later at Del Sol Medical Center. Police spent most of the day yesterday trying to figure out what happened. ABC 7 asked El Paso police today if any new information will be released, and we were told no, not yet. A co-worker telling the ABC 7i team, Raymond Navarez was a surgical technician at Sierra okay. Medical Center. We did not find public records of domestic violence, arrest, divorce, or custody disputes. Well, the hospital is not confirming what two credible sources already have to us, and that's Emily's mother worked at Del Sol Medical Center, the same hospital where the teenager died. No word if her mom was at work at the time, though. Out of Eastwood Middle School tonight, where the students, they spent a second day coping with the tragic news and the school's principal directly involved. We did not do anything over a PA or, or anything that was very impersonable. We actually met with every single student at our school uh, yesterday and today. Well, that is Principal Melinda Villalobos, and she did not want her students to hear about this on social media, like many of you did. Instead, she personally gave them direct and factual information, and she says the wall made of roses in honor of Emily Rose was put together by her classmates. And of course, counselors on standby today. Parents need to be um, supportive and to listen to their kids and to their feelings. And that is Utah professor, Dr. Rick Meyers says, uh, excuse me, and many times uh, saying that when people are going through a crisis, the signs start off slow, if you notice any kind of alarming change in personality suggests, he suggests, talking to a mental health professional. Well, Steve tonight saying, I agree. I am trying to explain to my daughter, a friend of Emily's, that there is no answer why he did it. Only her dad knows why. And thinks there's a special place in hell for him, and I hope he's roasting for it. Joe is not taking sides, though. You all shouldn't judge, especially when you don't know what happened. Deborah sharing this tonight, God forgive this poor soul of a father. Whatever he was going through must have been pretty serious. Still, if he wanted to end his life, why include his little girl? Very tragic. Ken is trying to understand why as well. Could be he shot her accidentally, felt so much grief, he killed himself. 
That's what I would do. And Maddie with this warning. Often the most dangerous people in our lives are the ones who live under the same roof. And Leslie closing out this discussion right now with so sad, cannot comprehend why he would do this. If you would like to uh, join the discussion, just visit KVIA.com on Facebook. And also, if you would like to help Emily's family pay for funeral services, information on the donations can be found at KVIA.com on Facebook and, of course, our main website, KVIA.com. You'll find this story on our homepage. Switching gears, and only on ABC 7 tonight, new at 9, we are hearing now from an alleged jugging victim. Remember, this term comes from the days when money would be put in jugs and stagecoaches, and then thieves would stake them out and take their money? ABC 7 told you all about the burglary crimes on Monday. Tonight, our Pilar Arias has a story. Again, you'll see it on Just One Station. Red car pulled up uh, against, uh, against my car backwards with paper license plates and before I knew it they broke the window to my car and, and looked in the, and opened up the glove compartment and took the remaining cash that I had left in there. 62 year old Ignacio Loza says it took burglars less than 30 seconds to steal hundreds of dollars from his car's glove compartment. He believes at least two of these four Houston men arrested by El Paso police were responsible for taking the money he needs to pay bills. Ignacio withdrew a large amount of money here at this GECU branch. Matter of fact, $2,100. He left $1,800 in his car as he was making his T-Mobile payment when the criminals hit. Loza says he was followed by more than just criminals, but also undercover cops who were following the suspects after a similar jugging just hours before. I was very disappointed with find out that T-Mobile management did not allow the police department to come in from the back to prevent it. There was also a third victim hit a couple hours after Loza was. Be careful your surroundings. If you don't have to carry a large amount of cash, don't carry it, but don't leave it in your vehicle. The three cases in one day have both El Paso police and Loza offering the same advice. Pilar Arias, ABC7. And tonight, El Paso police saying always be aware of your surroundings and never leave money inside an unattended vehicle. I'm sure you have something to say about this. Let us know on Facebook. In the meantime, developing all this week, it is your voice, it is your vote. Election Day this Saturday, early voting is already over, so that means on Saturday you have to go to your specific voting location to cast a ballot. If you would like to find out where you can vote or maybe a sample ballot before you get there so you know what you're up against, all you have to do is go to the Election Center at KVIA.com right now. And there's a chance that you will decide what pay raise and benefits firefighters here in El Paso will get this Saturday. A yes vote for the fire department will give them a total of 9% pay raises across the board through 2018. That's a 3% a year raise. And a no vote gives them a 2.25 pay raise across the board. However, if the firefighters union accepts the city's latest proposal, it would then cost the average El Pasoan an extra $10 every year for three years. It would then be settled and a moot point if it happens before Election Day. So we'll let you know what happens. Will you vote? Will you not vote? We should know by Election Day. It will smoke from a train that derailed, covered the sky, forcing nearby residents to evacuate. This is in North Dakota. Critics saying that aging train tracks could lead to more accidents like this one. This is the fifth accident since February with a tanker on a rail car where it overturns and bursts into flames. Now, we do know 100 cars all up and down this track were carrying the crude oil. Firefighters have not been able to get close enough to fight the blaze. Now, thankfully, nobody was hurt. Again, happening up in North Dakota, an entire town there was pretty much evacuated. It's also the day after Cinco de Mayo, and an El Paso man is without somebody he went out with last night. Police say 33-year-old David Pinetto drove his SUV into a median on Dyer near Manila at about 1.30 this morning. The SUV rolled over. Pinetto was killed. Police say he had likely been drinking. His passenger, though, survived with only minor injuries. And a woman is in the same predicament after someone she went out with last night was killed in a wreck on the east side. This happened at about 2.30 this morning on Loop 375 between Spur 601 and Montana. Police saying a woman was likely drinking right before she got onto the wrong side of the loop and drove the opposite way. 
how she reportedly hit a median and flipped her Jeep. Police will not say if the driver or a female passenger was the woman killed. They will say, though, neither was wearing a seatbelt and both were thrown out of the Jeep. And another woman accused of getting drunk last night, causing a head-on collision on US-180 just outside Deming. Sheriff's officials in New Mexico and Luna County saying that the driver of the car she hit, William May, died at UMC here in El Paso. We know others in both vehicles are still in the hospital tonight. Well, speaking up, let's give you a live look at traffic right now. This is with the help of TxDOT. East El Paso, I-10 and Zaragoza looks pretty good in both directions. Keep in mind, a scheduled maintenance uh, is going to be happening periodically uh, throughout the borderland. Now there's the backup at I-10 and Lee Trevino we've been seeing because of construction. So just keep in mind, if you're eastbound heading out of the city, the Lee Trevino area might slow you down just a little bit. Thanks to one of our viewers, Daniel Pacheco tonight, he helped get the word out to Tornillo residents of yet another water problem. This is because he shared this video with us on our Facebook page today, and I had the pleasure of speaking with him directly about this. Now, this video shows the water at his house not really the color it should be. After calling us, then I made some phone calls, and I found out that Tornillo residents, you're being asked to boil your water again until it's running clear. Just to be on the safe side, a spokeswoman for the Tornillo Water District says it's because of the five, last month's five-day water outage and the pipes are in need of extra flushing. And the problem could be cleared up hopefully by this weekend. So again, just use common sense. They're saying if your water is not the right color, boil it before consumption or simply uh, get some fresh water, drinking water. You can always call the American Red Cross if you need some. And good news, though, if you live on the east side of the county as well, a new El Paso County annex. It means you won't have to travel all the way to downtown to get courthouse services. You will have access now to the county commissioner, uh, also justice of the peace, the constable, adult probation, and even the county clerk. What this represents is really the building for our county residents. And what we're doing is we're taking the county to the neighborhoods to our to our uh, residents. Well, the new annex will also have a community meeting room, and apparently it's going to be big enough to house 100 people at a time. Okay, storm track weather right now. We have Nicole Gomez on top of all the social media gathering that you're doing. You are tracking what outside right now? Clear skies. That's nice. And nice weather. Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look at top of the radar. It is gorgeous out there. We're not tracking very much rainfall. We're not tracking any rainfall, I should say. But let's take a look at Doppler radar where you can see those clear conditions. It is a nice night. Here's a look at your current temperature 78 degrees, El Paso, west to northwest winds, 8 miles per hour. So we're seeing lighter winds right now. They were stronger throughout the afternoon. And in Las Cruces right now, clear skies 64, west to northwest winds at 7 miles per hour. So wind speeds currently across the region. We're at 14, dimming. Light winds to your sea, Las Cruces, Alamogordo, we're at 8 miles per hour, El Paso, from Guadalupe Pass, who typically has the strongest winds, sitting at 9 miles per hour right now. So coming up tonight, we can still feel those occasional breezes throughout your evening. Tomorrow, more wind in the forecast, but this weekend, I'm tracking windy conditions, a cold front, and possibly rain for next week. We'll talk about those details and take a look at the latest future track computer model coming up in weather. All right, Nicole, thanks so much for that. Okay, a story that we had last week. It is back in the news tonight. You might remember the story had Richard telling us last week, handle your business, trooper, make them pay. And Rano saying, on duty or not, it's his job to protect and serve the entire community, even people with a criminal record. Well, Nicole, it's all about a Texas trooper who was suing his boss after he was reprimanded over a photo he took with Snoop Dogg and it went on Instagram. Trooper Billy Spears says that he was working off-duty security when Snoop's assistant took the pic and posted it on Instagram and emails released today now showing he is uh, the state's chief lawmaker, his boss, or the chief law enforcement official, I should say, uh, called Snoop Dogg a dope-smoking cop hater before reprimanding Spears, the trooper says it's all in retaliation for filing a complaint against one of his superiors, Nicole. Oh, I remember this picture and this story, and here's what Mike yeah. thinks. This cop is going to win a lawsuit, and Snoop can sue for racism. Sarah says, oh, he'll win for sure. They allowed other deputies to take pictures with celebrities while working events, but this guy gets reprimanded? Not only will he win, but his superior will probably be fired. And Mike doesn't buy it, though. DPS holds its officers to a high standard. The DPS arrested a guy at the Capitol with a blue rubber gun, citing criminal trespass on private property. DPS is full of goons. Johnny simply saying, 
It's true. Okay, Nicole, here is a question for you. Um, maybe it's a little too political for you to answer, but folks at home can answer. Do you think the governor of Texas overreacted when calling the state guard to monitor the U.S. military during, during a training exercise? A lot of folks calling out the governor tonight, Nicole, like Louise, who is telling us this just shows, shows us and shows everybody how dumb conservatives are. That's from Luis, not from me. We'll get to the rest of your discussion coming up. In the meantime, this is ABC 7 at 9 on The CW. You don't just watch the news, you are the news. We'll be right back.